Colin Benson welcoming you to Upton Park where table-topping West Ham United take on Swindon Town for the very first time in league competition. Quite an occasion then, particularly for Hammers boss Lou Macari, who for the very first time pits his wits against the club he steered from the obscurity of Division 4 to the second division in just five years. West Ham maintained their top-of-the-table position last Saturday with a 1-1 draw at Hull City, the goal coming from Mark Ward, his first of the season. Martin Allen, who scored here on his debut a fortnight ago, was also close to adding to that uh, score at Boothbury Park, rattling the bar with a 30-yarder and seeing two other fine efforts brilliantly saved. Well, Mr. Macari only had 13 fit players to select from, for that game and the situation has changed little here this afternoon. Stuart Slater suffered a knock on the thigh in training. That was on Friday and is left with a hematoma. So back comes George Paris who dropped out of last Saturday's starting line because of a back strain himself. Swindon Town are now under the direction of Ozzy Ardilis, registered their first win of the season last Sunday with a comprehensive 3-1 win over Wolverhampton Wanderers. A casualty of that game was a striker Duncan Shearer who pulled a hamstring and his place goes to Sean Close, a midweek signing from Bournemouth. Close, who was 23 yesterday, is a former colleague of Ardilis at White Hart Lane. Another former Tottenham star on view today is ERA international Tony Galvin, now 32 and signed from Sheffield Wednesday on a free transfer this summer. Well, the mascot today is Paul Davies comes from East Ham, he's 10 years old and attends the Brampton Junior School, an ardent Hammers fan. The two skippers, Colin Calderwood for Swindon Town, Alvin Martin for West Ham United, and the referee, the experienced Alan Seville from Birmingham. The two linesmen this afternoon, Jimmy Hill with the red trim on his flag, and Richard Saunders with the yellow trim. And a long ball played forward by Lee Barnard. In for the injured uh, Hocker Day. That's right back. Calderwood square to the experienced Phil King on the uh, left of their defence. Julian Dix in there quickly. Already his socks are down around his ankles. And Dix in there again to uh, stop Alan McLaughlin. McLaughlin, the number four for Swindon, had a good game here in that uh, replay last season. Throw then to be taken by Barnard. George Paris coming in with the challenge and winning the ball from Tom Jones. But uh, Swindon not giving in there. And a goal kick. <laughs> Phil Parks. Mark Ward laying that off to uh, Allen. Ward getting the touch there. It's rather a, a lightweight uh, attack that West Ham United have got this afternoon. Mark Ward and David Kelly. Liam Brady winning that ball well and being fouled at the same time. Paris. Under pressure there, forced to play it back to Phil Parks. Ward's header, intercepted by McLaren. A little push on the back there on George Paris by Tom Jones, and uh, that was spotted by Mr. Seville. One of the smallest referees in the league, Alan Seville, but uh, a great character. Tony Gale with a free kick. Alvin Martin up there, but... Uh, 
a little bit of pushing spotted by the linesman with the yellow flag Richard Saunders Steve Potts with the throw Kevin Keane came off his man but the ball wasn't delivered it was that time straight to Ross McLaren And Sean Close, the last to touch that one, so another throw to West Ham United. Allen, early ball, looking for Kelly. Mark Ward in there, oh, beautiful ball to Kelly. Kelly sweeps it across to Liam Brady. Can he get to it before it sweeps over the line? He does. Brady, 33 years of age now, blocked there surely by Lee Barnard, but uh, wins the corner. Brady fresh from his uh, international duty with the Republic of Ireland on Wednesday. He played in the first 36 minutes of their game against West Germany. And now he has the free kick for West Ham United. Looking for the far post. Alvin Martin there, but uh, Fraser Digby getting his hands to it. Took it well. Calderwood. Barnard. John Gittins. Picked out by Potts there. A good ball finds Kevin Keane. He's got Allen inside. Plays it outside for Mark Ward. A chance to get the cross in, and he does. There's only Kelly in the middle, though. Kelly gets his head to it. Can't direct it down on the target. But a good sweeping move there from the Hammers. And that caused a great deal of panic in the Swindon six-yard box. Paris, Brady, good ball by Brady to Ward. Ward taking on Calderwood. Julian Dix. Oh, this is a control, let him down, but he gets it the second time. Chance for a shot from Paris! And that just over the bar from George Paris. Gittins, Dix, Paris, close played it inside but uh, Martin Allen back there quickly, Gale, Gale playing that over the top, a beautiful ball through and Ward just unable to get in on it, I think he clipped the goalkeeper there and uh, Lee Barnard having a word or two to say to uh, Ward but uh, Really, there was nothing intentional there. He had to go in for the ball. And the referee telling uh, Barnard that he's the man in charge. This is Barnard, longest serving uh, player on uh, Swindon's books, the number two. He's been with them since July 82. Yeah, so it looks like uh, blood down the, uh, just, above the right eye there seems sprightly enough though doesn't he so on with the show Julian Dix with a throw for West Ham United finds Ward Brady Dix Ward good football this and the saving tackle coming in from Tom Jones ball through the middle for White to chase and uh, that one almost didn't come through quick enough for Phil Parks Kelly with a touch. This is Barnard. McLaughlin. Steve Potts will get to that one. In fact, he lets it go through to Phil Parks, and Parks gets caught at the other end. But uh, on the back of his shoulder, no damage done. Julian Dix closed down very quickly there by Alan McLaughlin. Ward, Dix, Ward, good play, 
very tight and the trip by Tom Jones so West Ham with the free kick Liam Brady the taker to Martin and Martin caught there by Steve White Well, Alvin Martin's never at his uh, best in these early games. Needs about five or six games to uh, get into his stride. Allen with a shot. Oh! <laughs> Martin Allen hit that one from all of 30 yards. Martin to Kelly. Kelly's control. Let him down there, this is Jones. Good ball played by McLaughlin. Out to Galvin on the left. King's done the overlap. But uh, slices his cross and it's a goal kick. Julian Dix. Gale. Very cool by Tony Gale, put into a little bit of trouble there with that ball. Good ball by Ward to Paris, to Brady. Ward again. Brady. Beautiful ball for Ward. Gets it across first time, and a shot coming in from Allen. And Martin Allen scores on his second appearance here at Upton Park. 16 and a half minutes on the clock. And that was delightful build-up. Here's the uh, happy man, Martin Allen. Promises to be quite a threat from midfield. Something that uh, West Ham need is some support from the midfield players, but a chance here for White. Oh, and a brilliant save by Parks. Phil Parks spread himself brilliantly there. And a lapse in the West Ham defence again. Let's Steve White through. White, who's yet to score this season. Denied once again by this man, Phil Parks. Potts with the cross. Kelly just beaten there by Gittins. Allen wins it. It's broken through. Kevin Keane hauled down there, right on the edge of the box. And the referee waves play on. Well, that was a definite uh, foul there. Right on the edge of the box. And uh, Kevin Keane, the man, hauled down. Ward, Brady, Allen, Kevin Keane. Keane out to Ward. Ward drives it across. Kelly's there. Oh, and he slices his shot. In fact, it was uh, Kevin Keane with a shot, not Kelly. Slices his shot wide of the far post. And they're caught out again. McLaughlin getting round the back there. Gale with the interception. And West Ham really lucky to get away with just a corner there because they were caught napping once again with a quickly taken free kick. And uh, they really must get that act together. McLaren. As the whistle goes to bring the first half to a close. A first half in which the Hammers have really dominated the play, but they lead by only one goal to nil. The goal coming from the boot of Martin Allen, the number nine there, after delightful approach work on the left between Ward and Brady. The half-time score then, West Ham United 1, Swindon Town 0. Welcome back for the second half. And it's West Ham United to start the game underway in the claret and blue shirts, white shorts kicking from left to right. And leading, of course, by one goal to nil in this uh, very important second division game here.
at Upson Park. Martin with the header. King gets it to Galvin. And he gets it back to King. And that's a fine ball in Alvin Martin with a header, and that's gone for a quarter. No, it hasn't. A free kick given for the challenge on Alvin Martin there. Kevin Keane, Martin, Ward into Paris, Paris gets it across to Brady, the overlap from Dix, the ball played in there, cut out by John Gittins, and uh, Dix caught Alan McLaughlin there, free kick given to Swindon Town. Number 11 there, Tony Galvin. 32 years of age now is Galvin. Ward, good turn by Ward. Looking for a great ball for Kelly. He must score here. Kelly goes down. Well, claims that... Uh, he was caught there, but that was a brilliant ball, and really, David Kelly should have done better with that. Lost his footing just at the vital moment. Right at the uh, start of this second half. Trying to find White, but uh, Gale to Keane. And... High ball from Tony Gale looking for Mark Ward. He really needs these balls played into feet. Ward just five foot eight. No match for the big defenders in the air. Steve Potts with the throw. He's waiting for a runner to come from behind. Looking for Kelly. <laughs> Kelly foul there by John Gittins. The number six. Gittins making his... Second appearance of the season, his 60th league game, in fact, for Swindon Town. Came back into the side uh, last Sunday against Wolves, having missed the first two games through suspension. Martin Allen with a free kick, then. Plays it to square, not a good one, but Julian Dix gets the shot in. And the keeper makes a fine save at full stretch. Well, Julian Dix did exceptionally well there because the layoff to him wasn't uh, too good. And Dix hammered it with that left foot. And met by the head of McLaren. Martin. Nice ball for uh, Kelly. Kelly tries to get the early cross in. And handball there by Kelly, but he uh, got away with it. And looks like he's got the free kick as well. <laughs> John Giddens explained it to the referee that uh, he palmed that ball down, but uh, the referee obviously didn't see it, so he can't give what he doesn't see. And Brady with the free kick. A good one onto the head of Kelly, and Kelly brings out a save from Fraser Digby. The Roy Rossini, of course, hasn't uh, played this season. And uh, West Ham badly uh, light in the attack zone. Stuart Slater injured for the second time this season. Kelly. Allen gets it, uh, gives it away to Galvin. White chasing Alvin Martin. And the flag up for offside. Given against Mark Ward.
forward by McLaren. Tony Gale on the ball. Getting caught there. And a good cross coming in from Barnard. And a chance here for Swindon. The good cross coming in. Pops with the header. And uh, plays it behind to concede the corner and allow his colleagues time to regroup. But uh, once again, the West Ham defence exposed there. And Tom Jones will take the corner. Short to Barnard. McLaren's unmarked there, gets the shot in, a deflection and a goal! Surely offside by John Gittins. The referee was right in line with him though, and it counts. So, eight minutes into the second half, John Gittins scores his first goal of the season and makes the scoreline here. West Ham United 1, Swindon Town 1. Mark Ward stopped by Jones. And Sean Close uh, unmarked over on this side of the field. Supported now by King. King, he's got Galvin to his left goes inside, tries the shot himself, and he's not going to beat Phil Pass. Well, it uh, caused him a problem there. Came off the ground very close to him. And Parks had to go down and uh, turn it for the corner. Eamon Dolan warming up on the far side there for West Ham United. Republic of Ireland, under-21 international striker. palms it down the flag was up on the far side but uh, the referee doesn't have to uh, halt the play offside against white play on again says the referee Brady in possession cut out by Barnard and uh, McLaughlin doing well there turned inside the challenge Making a good 30-yard run, stopped by Paris in the end. Brady. Paris. Ward. And Ward uh, clattered there by John Gittins. Getting tight on Ward. Mark Ward. Knocks the ball back. Takes up his front roll again, closely uh, marked by Lee Barnard. Tom Jones orchestrating there in the middle. Long free kick, Alvin Martin took it on his chest, it ran away from him. Julian Dix with the throw. Ward. McLaren. King playing it over the top. This is Galvin. And Galvin having a, a, sl uh, a slash there at Steve Potts and Potts and Galvin in a tangle as the play continues. Allen now. He's got Kelly to his right. Oh, and Allen tries it himself and sliced his shot well wide. So there's Eamon Dolan. No, it's Alan Devonshire, in fact, uh, stripping off over there. Eamon Dolan was doing the running around. Martin, Devonshire. Devonshire uh, brought down there, but uh, back in the fray again. Solid challenge from him, but it was McLaren who came out with the ball. This is Paris. Galvin. And Julian Dix going in on a Galvin. And George Paris reacting very stupidly there. On the... Uh, on Tony Galvin, and we have a, a rumpus there. It could well be a sending off, I suggest. And that will be sad in the game which has really been played in the best of uh, spirits. 
Although uh, Alan Seville, a very experienced uh, official. Looks like he's booking Galvin. Martin Allen putting his uh, two penneth in. And the yellow card it is for Tony Galvin. And now George Paris. What's in store for, for him? Looks like they're going to substitute Galvin now, which is a sensible thing to do. Now it's Julian Dix who uh, is booked, sorry, Julian Dix. And immediately I think Swindon want to take Galvin off. And that is probably the best thing to do. Ardilis acting very sensibly there. So uh, he takes Galvin off. And on comes John Cornwall. Devonshire with the... Uh, uh, Sorry, uh, Dolan there with the flick down. Paris trying to break through. Paris, of course, uh, in that incident, trying to uh, haul Julian Dix off Galvin. And the chance here, Dix getting across White. And allowing the ball to go through to Phil Parks. Julian Dix, always in the thick of the action. Dolan with a touch, Cornwall back to Gittins. Mark Ward coming in on him and stealing it from him. And Swindon uh, warming up their other substitute as well, Paul Hunt, a 19-year-old, and uh, this is the very first time he's actually been involved with the first-team squad, let alone play. Close, beaten by Gale, Paris, McLaren, Alvin Martin battling for it with White, and White reacting badly there, and Alvin Martin really ought to pull away from that situation. George Paris again quick to uh, smother the captain, and really Alvin Martin with the experience he's got, he's an England international, he shouldn't really react to situations like that. So Alvin Martin's name now goes in the book. And this could all be very costly later in the season when the uh, chips are down and points are vital. Yellow card for Martin. Back to Devonshire. Devonshire slides the tackle. Looks for Kevin Keane and Keane has done well. Pulls that one down. Taking on Tom Jones, gets in the cross. Mark Ward with a header, Dolan misses it. And a few nerves being shown by Eamon Dolan there, I think, as Tom Jones gets it back to Fraser Digby. Well, as uh, we said at the beginning of this game, this is the very first league meeting between these two uh, clubs. But uh, the Hammers have played Swindon Town many times before in the Southern League. Alvin Martin getting that challenge in. Paris back to Phil Parks. In fact, uh, they've played 32 times against each other in the Southern League. Ward here. Finds Dolan. Dolan to Ward. And just a little bit too uh, high for him to uh, get that under control. As I say, 32 times they met in the Southern League. That uh, first game was in the season of 1899-1900, when the Hammers won here by 1-0. And of the 16 home games, they won nine, drew three, and lost just four. Phil King blocked by uh, 
Kevin Keane, Calderwood through. Potts going in. Well played by Phil King. Looking for Cornwall. Big lad is Cornwall. And it's Devonshire who uh, gets his head to it first. <laughs> Phil Parks, 39. This is his 723rd league appearance. Long one from Parks. It's Barnard who comes out with the ball. Julian Dix being closed down there by Sean Close. Julian Dix, a great ball. Oh, it just came off uh, the turf too uh, quickly for Kevin Keane. The direction was perfect. Just hit a little too strongly. Dix. Dolan, nowhere near that one. I think the uh, wind could be uh, causing a few problems because if you remember in the first half, Alvin Martin uh, misjudged the ball in practically the same position there. Calderwood being uh, sent back. All time wasting as far as uh, West Ham are concerned. It's they who badly need the win. Devonshire to Allen. Devonshire back into space for Allen. Good play this. Devonshire's on the left. Allen finds him. The early cross from Devonshire. Dolan with a header. Oh, and it went spun off his head. What a delightful approach work again. And it all came from this man, 33-year-old Allen Devonshire. In this, his second appearance of the season, his first at Upton Park. And just a minute left of normal time. Some injury time to add on, of course, but this uh, game seemingly heading for a draw. Oh, what can happen here? Mark Ward going through. Mark Ward shoots, and it came off the hands of Fraser Digby. Mark Ward, who scored his first goal of the season in the fifth minute at Hull last Saturday, letting fly with a blockbuster there, which Digby turns aside. And there we are, it's all over. Well, uh, not much injury time added on here. The Hammers then have to be content with a draw. They riddled Swindon Town's defence with precise, purposeful passes in the first half, but could not find the finish to match their superiority in midfield. And really, they had to be content with just that one goal from the right foot of Martin Allen in the 16th minute. In the second half, Swindon fought bravely and capitalised on a terrible error at the back to equalise and uh, try as they would to get back into the lead. West Ham could not find another goal. So the final score here at Upton Park is West Ham United 1, Swindon Town 1. Phil, 1-1 one, one with Swindon, a bit disappointing. It was really after the first half where we, um, we sort of made a few chances and played really good football again. It's, it's the pattern that's happened every game up to yet this season that we've played really good football first half. Looked as though we were going to walk away with the game. In the second half, we seemed to let them come back into it. They either snatch a point, or in the case of a, the, the Plymouth game at home, where they got two goals back and uh, made us fight at the end of it. So it's been the pattern of every game so far. How did you see the goal against today? Um, well, it was a very, very sort of uh, lucky goal for them, really. The guys had a shot from a corner. They played a short corner, knocked it in to the edge of the box, and the guys had a shot, and it's just ricocheted through 
as we've pushed out, it's ricocheted through. There was a slight suspicion that the guy might have been offside because he was actually standing there all the time. I felt although, that although, the, although the referee yeah. said that he was, he'd, he'd, he'd run in, but he wasn't. He was actually standing there mm. all the time. Um, the guy actually, where he come from, the, it, it's gone through to, to one of their forwards. I think it was Stevie White. He's then, he's gone to hit it, miss kicked it, hit Julian, and he's bounced up just lovely for the guy to just plump into the net. So, you know, it was uh, another unfortunate, really, you know, sort of incident for us, another goal against, another sloppy one, really. We got caught several times on dead ball kicks today, I felt. We did, yes. We're, we're looking a little bit ragged at the back. I mean, this is this is a bit worrying that, uh, although we, we look great going forward, we're, uh, we look as though if we get caught by a good side um, counter-attacking us, then we could be in trouble. I mean, Swindon really had a couple of chances today to do that and uh, didn't seem really to capitalise on them. A good game, or the last two games, in fact, at Hull for yourself. Uh, some magnificent saves in the first half at Hull and uh, one or two in the first half here today. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's, um, it's funny, sort of, uh, here I'm in the situation now. I wasn't really expecting to be in it. Uh, probably just be a squad member this year, really, because of my testimonial and everything else. And and here I am, sort of just you know keeping my place in the first team and, and feeling quite good at the moment as well. You're an awesome sight when your striker comes through. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm less of an awesome sight at the moment. I keep losing a bit of weight, so this is this is his ploy, I think. But you know, I keep telling him the bigger I am, I'm going to get like Stevie Bacon. Then I mean, they'll never score. That's my <laughs> that's my theory anyway. Well, Martin, you're making a habit of scoring at uh, Upton Park. Must be your favourite ground. Yeah, it's not a bad start, two in two home games. Um, I'm fortunate to miss out one on the Hull last week that came off the bar. So it's not so bad so far. Take us through the goal today. Oh, I can't really remember a lot of it. Um, I think Liam put Mark Ward in, uh, got down the line, didn't he? And I think he cut it back. And uh, I was just coming in from the edge of the box, really, and just hit it, and then it went. I was just trying to hit them as hard as you can, and you don't try and play some at all. Hit it as, as well as you can, keep it down. And uh, lucky this week it went in. The feature of your play today was the fact that you were shooting as soon as you saw the whites of the goalposts. Uh, is this your normal style? Uh, yeah, as I said, last week at Hull I was a bit unlucky. A few minutes to go, I had a 30 yard shot, hit the crossbar and came out. And just before that, I had a long distance one, and the goalie made quite a good save. Unfortunately, today the goalie, uh, I didn't uh, hit the target, which is disappointing. And I've often practiced my long shooting getting a bit of space there and having a go. I used to see Steve McMahon do it a lot, and uh, I used to think, well, if he can whack him, why not uh, give it a try yourself? So I had the confidence recently to do it. Um, I, a few went in last year for QPR, and uh, sooner or later, want to go in here soon, I think. What about the, the game overall today? Uh, I think we've got to look at it disappointingly, really. We're, you know, we're, I'm desperate, and we're all desperate for this club to get promotion. Uh, with all due, due respect to Swindon, we've really got to be beating them when we play here at Upton Park, 21,000, big stadium. Uh, we've got to be beating them. Uh, we looked as though we had the game one at half-time, 1-0, missed a lot of chances. And then for some reason the game drifted away from us. They'd done well, to be fair to them, they battled well and got back into the game, changed their formation, made it difficult for us in midfield with an extra player in there. Um, so I'd, I'd say they'd done well in the second half, but. I think they've only done as well as what we allowed them to do. Uh, we've got to work on that, really, not letting them back into a game when we're leading. What does it boil down to, really, Martin? Is it putting the chances away when they do come? I mean, we could have been three up at half-time if we had taken our chances. Is it down to that, or is it to overall play throughout the 90 minutes? Yeah, it's down to the overall play. I mean, we could say, oh, you've missed chances, you've missed chances, but... Um, Teams that forever saying that are whinging, oh, we should, if we'd have knocked the chances in, we'd have done that this week. And we said it again last week, if we didn't put our chances away, we'd have won this week. So now that's two games in Plymouth the week before, we, we won 3-2 and we could have won that 6-0. In the last five minutes against Plymouth, I remember a fellow had a chance there to make it 3-0. Uh, I think it's been more ruthless, really. If Liverpool had won, been 1-0 one up, if other teams would have been uh, up against the teams that we played, like Hull, and against Plymouth, they wouldn't have got back into the games like they have done. They wouldn't have got the ball. Um, the game would have been closed down, the tempo taken out of it. And that's really what a championship team is made of, that ability to kill a game off, not give them a chance. And then if a chance has come, the striker to knock one in, knock one in, the game's comfortable. Is that something that can be developed? I hope so. You've got to hope so. 
Um, that's always players as a club and in the training sessions, the manager can instil, instil it into us. I think perhaps we're a little bit anxious at the moment. Um, desperate, so desperate to get up. I think maybe we do get a little bit anxious, just maybe charging forward just a little bit too much. Like we say, we could have won 6 nil the week before, we could have won 4-0 last week, and we could have perhaps won 5 nil here this week. Maybe let's take our time a little bit, um, win 2-0, and let's be satisfied.